number three. On the night of my sister's wedding, our hotel realized that they were overbooked, and my boyfriend and I suddenly found ourselves needing to find another hotel room at almost 11 p.m. on a Saturday night. We drove around for what seemed like forever in the town we were in, and finally found a vacancy at a Super 8 hotel. It wasn't in the best neighborhood, but the rooms were clean enough. My boyfriend had way too much to drink at the wedding, and passed out cold as soon as we got to the room. Back then I used to smoke a little, and had brought some, and proceeded to watch TV and smoke a little pot. At about 12.30am, there was suddenly a huge bang on our hotel room door. I literally almost fell out of the bed, it scared me so bad. Someone was on the other side of the door banging on it. Like door shaking, heart stopping, banging on the door. I should also mention that these hotels had their entryways set up on the outside of the hotel. So whoever it was did not have to come into the hotel. They could have just walked up from the street. I tried to wake up my drunk boyfriend, but could not get him to wake no matter what I did. I still to this day do not understand how all this ruckus did not wake him up. The super loud banging on the door continued relentlessly. Suddenly, the man on the other side of the door started screaming and yelling through the door in another language and wailing at the top of his lungs. Oh my god, the wailing. It was legit the most scary, haunting sound I had ever heard. I can't even begin to describe the sound of it, other than it was the most gut-wrenching sounds that I had ever heard. I was too terrified to walk up to the window and look out, and scared to call the police because of the pot smoke that the room smelled of. I tried to call the front desk, but the phone just rang and rang. This continued for at least 20 or 30 minutes, the whole time with the loud banging, wailing, and foreign words being yelled in an angry voice. I thought he was going to kick in the door or break the window because he was going freaking crazy out there. I was so terrified that I went in the opposite corner of the room and just sat there crying until it finally stopped. No one from any other rooms besides us ever came out or anything, so maybe they were all vacant. I have no idea, but it seemed like it lasted forever. When it stopped, I heard the man go down the outside stairs, so I knew he left. Still, I did not sleep at all that night. When my boyfriend finally woke up, I told him about the scary wailing man, and we left, immediately. When I checked out of the hotel, I asked the lady at the desk had there been an incident reported by anyone, and she said no. What the heck, is this just a normal occurrence here? I had never been so happy to leave a hotel in my life. Scary, angry wailing man? Let's not meet. Number two. This just happened tonight. Not to me, but to my wife. I'm writing this from a McDonald's parking lot three blocks away from the police station, where my wife is giving her statement. She works front desk at a hotel. It's a busy one, giving more to the business types. She usually works until 11 or midnight, and being the protective type, I'm usually there with her. They're not altogether altruistic reasons, but Wi-Fi, coffee, and TV. Three weeks back, I'm there watching an episode of Justified, and I meet this fellow. I got his name, but I forgot it instantly. He's staying there long term, not going to say why, business of sorts. I don't like him. One, he interrupted my show. Two, I can tell he's off. Rambling has a cast on his hand from what he said was hitting a wall, speaks of 2012 prophecy and fundamentalist Christianity, talks of being sober for 36 months but takes a lot of pills. He's got issues. He had an ambulance called last week, apparently an OD. Still there, tonight he calls down to my wife, says call the police. My wife asks if anyone's hurt. He says someone will be in about 90 seconds. She quickly calls the cop. He comes down and goes to the dining room. He's got a gun. The assistant manager goes out there and then my wife does a couple minutes later. The assistant manager is face down on the carpet, the man over him, still holding the gun. He sees my wife. The gun points at her. Monday, the manager of the hotel says he doesn't want me there all the time. Nothing personal, he just thinks it might be weird to the guest. That's why I wasn't there. I was out with some friends. The man points the fucking gun at my wife. 
He hears something, gets distracted. My wife backs up and gets behind the wall. The police come in, a lot of them. She hears the man yelling, and she hears a shot. She didn't know who pulled the trigger. Number 1 This is still an ongoing ordeal. It started last week, and I'm still trying to figure out how to handle the insanity that has quickly taken over my life. I had recently moved to a new town and had been job hunting. I stopped by a hotel on the shoreline and went in to see if they needed someone for desk work. Inside was vacant, dark, and smelled stale. The man behind the desk had an extremely thick accent, and it was difficult for me to understand him. It seemed like he was the only person in the whole building, and I got a strange vibe from the whole place, but stayed to fill out the application and turn it in as quickly as possible. I could feel him staring at me the entire time. The man muttered something under his breath and took my app. After I left, I decided I most likely would not be accepting position there because of the strangeness of the situation and really regretted leaving my phone number, address, and other personal info on the application. Later that evening, I'm at home watching the Olympics in my living room, around 10 or so. I go into my bedroom to grab my phone off the charger and see I have a missed call from just a few minutes earlier. It's strange for anyone to be calling me so late, but I redialed the number to satisfy my curiosity. A woman with a thick accent answers and demands to know who is calling. I politely told her that I had a missed call from this number. She starts screaming, No, 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 no! Sarah. At the top of her lungs, it hangs up. It freaked me out that she had used my name in her crazy talk, but figured it was some crackhead that had misdialed my number. I take my phone with me back into my living room and sit down. Right then, my phone starts ringing again. I answer and it's the man from the hotel, yelling my name over and over again. He is screaming at the top of his lungs, and I can hear the woman yelling too. I could catch pieces of what they were saying but in between their accents and both of them screaming, it was difficult to get it all. I heard, Disturb my phone. Disturb your life. You can't see. And that's about it. I hung up really fast and proceeded to flip out. They called back 14 times within about 20 minutes. Thankfully, I don't have my voicemail set up, so they couldn't leave any. My husband comes home around midnight, and I told him what was happening. He laughed it off and said they were probably on drugs, and just dialed my number to fuck with me. I really hated the fact that these people had a decent chunk of my personal information, but I figured they were too crazy to do anything but make creepy phone calls at night. I finally calmed down enough to go to sleep at around 3 in the morning. About half an hour later, I wake up to my dog barking, growling, and charging at the back door. I know immediately that something is wrong because she never acts like this and is well trained. My husband and I both sprint into the living room and see a hand reaching through the doggy door. I screamed and my husband grabbed me and we went to the bedroom and locked the door. I dialed the police and thankfully they were there within 10 minutes. The man was gone, but I knew exactly who it was. I gave them my statement and showed them my call log from earlier. They called the number, but it turned out to be a prepaid phone, so there wasn't a whole lot they could do to trace it. By the time the police left, it was around 5.30 in the morning which was okay with me since I wouldn't be able to go to sleep anyway. A few hours later, my husband, who was still really pissed off, and I decided to go to the hotel to try to get some information about the guy and inform the staff that this guy was nuts. We spoke to the manager there, and he told us that the man I described had been fired a year ago for stalking a housemaid. What the fuck was he doing in the lobby last week then? They checked the security cameras and discovered that he was constantly walking around the hotel and staring into the windows. I guess he had snuck in while the manager left the desk right as I walked in. The manager contacted the police and was able to file trespassing charges against him. Now at least the police are looking for him. At this point I'm in tears. I've given a crazy person all of my information and he was harassing and stalking me. I'm still receiving phone calls from strange numbers during the night but luckily he hasn't returned to my house, as far as I know. I contacted my references I had used on my application to let them know what was going on. Apparently, my old boss was left a voicemail at around 2 in the morning on Monday, hearing heavy breathing and perhaps some sex noises and moans. 
This past week, I haven't been able to sleep at all. I'm a nervous wreck and jump out of my skin every time my phone rings or I hear my dog barking. This definitely isn't the scariest story on here, but it's nice to be able to write everything out. I'm sure I will have an update in a week or two. Hey guys, Bumpin' the Night here, and I just wanted to thank you for watching, and a huge thank you to Goodnight for letting me help out on this video. We also did a collab on my channel if you want to check that out too. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until next time, stay spooky.